invite you to join with me in the invitation. Dear Lord, the month of May is a time of prayer for those that protect us. We pray and celebrate the veterans that have given their lives in order that we may live in a country of free speech and a life of our choosing. We pray and celebrate the law enforcement and fire personnel that protect our community. Most importantly, we celebrate the Lord, our great protector, with a day of prayer for our nation, both here and nationally. Let us come together before God to show our unity in our country in a time of need for spiritual guidance shown to us by our Creator. There is no greater act than to come to the Lord in prayer. Amen. 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 Approval of the minute. Consider approval of the minutes from the April 18th, 2022 regular and closed session minutes. Move to approve. Motion by Councilmember Aldridge. Second. Second by Councilmember Hughes. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Public hearings. Ordinance 2223, consider a map amendment for a zoning amendment 2204 to rezone property on South Belt Avenue from General Highway Business District <coughs> to R6. Staff, if you would introduce. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Bless, you. Bless you. This is application ZMA 22-04. Uh, applicants are Rockstar Capital uh, 2. Um, the owner is uh, Gene uh, Udi Bennett. Um, address is 141 South Bell Avenue. Um, and uh, currently, this is a, um, a one parcel. Uh, it's zone GH. It's zone GHBD. They are proposing to zone it to R6. Um, and I'll go ahead and look forward to show you that real quick. This is this this was previously rezoned. Uh, these parcels over here, if you're familiar, this is Bogan. This is Eastover. Um, they are looking to rezone this to R6 as well, so it can be added onto this as a subdivision, which is on your agenda tonight as well. Um, I can find staff analysis here. Here's a picture of the uh, building on site there. Uh, it is approximately a quarter acre, and um, the proposed use there will be single-family attached townhomes. Um, right now, to the north is General Highway Business District. To the south, right there at the corner, is also General Highway Business District. And then to the east and west are R6 Urban Residential District, which is the <coughs> district they have uh, recommended. Um, utility services are currently provided to this parcel. The future land use map classifies the parcel in the surrounding area as neighborhood residential, um, which are areas located in the city's corporate limit and include many mature neighborhoods. Public utilities are available and an extensive road and sidewalk network already exists. These areas are intended to provide for residential infill development with a wide range of housing types surrounding the town center area. Low intensity business uses use located in mixed use buildings or buildings designed and constructed at a residential scale and appearance are also appropriate. Development considerations include the compatibility of infill development with existing building patterns. Um, the property is not located in any reg regulated floodplain or watershed. <coughs> Again, here is the uh, future land use map. Uh, property is uh, just off of Main Street right here, where the star is. <coughs> For reference, if you'll remember, this these were the uh, this is the uh, uh, South Bell uh, townhome development that was approved uh, previously. The applicant intends to rezone this lot to R6 Urban Residential in order to be congruent with adjacent zoning districts and to expand the previously approved cluster development across the street of South Bell Avenue. Um, and their intent is to emphasize a high district density district similar to Albemarle's oldest neighborhoods with townhomes there. Um, given the proposed use, the parcels proposed use under the future land use plan and its proximity to R6 urban residential district, um, as well as a continuation of previously approved cluster development plans, there are merits for the proposed rezoning to be consistent with the city's future land use plan. Um, staff has also provided the um, consistency, inconsistency, and um, land use amendment statements uh, below for your consideration. Council, have any questions of staff? Okay. 
Hearing none, anyone else care to speak for or against? Move that public hearing be closed. Motion by Council Member Hall to close the public hearing. Second. Second by Council Member Aldridge. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, those opposed? Motion carries. Council, you have before you a consistency statement, inconsistency statement, <coughs> our future land use map amendment. I think staff has told you that the planning board agreed that it was the consistency statement from their findings. Move approval of ordinance 22-23. Second. On the map amendment. Motion by council member Townsend, second by council member Whitley. Further discussion? With the statement. With the, With the consistency, consistency statement. With the consistency. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Moving to agenda adjustments, we have uh, one unannounced delegation that will be coming forward to give us a couple street closing requests that we will do under announced delegations. And then we have two agreements to approve with Stanley Motors and First and Main LLC that I would like to add uh, after number nine. And Mayor, I'd like to uh, request a closed session. Closed session to consult with an attorney, correct? Personnel. Personnel. Move approval of all three. By, motion by Council Member Hall. Second. Second by Council Member Dry. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Moving into the unannounced delegation, Ms. Tiffany Dahl <coughs> to request the street. <coughs> I think she has two requests. Okay. okay, does everybody have a copy of it? We do, yes. Okay, yes. So it's just for um, the section of uh, Main Street between first and second, and it'll be the second Saturday of each month, starting in May, ending in October right now. So each request has like three or four Saturdays on it. And that is from two until eight, if I can right. correct. It will probably end sooner than that, but they wanted, the car club wanted it a little bit longer just to be safe. Council, have any questions? Move approval. Second. Motion by Council Member Hall to approve the request. Second by Council Member Townsend. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. And you have made arrangements with either Lisa or Ross about what kind of cones and barricades you'll need. Okay, we're good. <laughs> <coughs> yes, <ten minutes. laughs> we'll move to the second request. We have two requests. But they're for all for the same thing. They're all, all the, the same, same thing. Let me okay. put all those dates on there. Yes. The okay. PDF yeah. Don't know. Stops me. So okay, I that's fine. Do, second one second one page. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Administrative reports. City of Bowman strategic plan presentation. Mr. Ferris. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is something that Parks and Recreation Director Lisa Kaiser and I are going to uh, uh, present jointly. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start, and, and Lisa will pick up at a certain point and uh, hit certain areas of the plan and the presentation. So, first of all, let me just say while the city is considering the adoption of the strategic plan, uh, as Council knows, the strategic plan, as it's constructed, is not the beginning or nor the end of any particular process. Um, if we look back at our planning activities over many, many years, they continue to build, they continue to escalate, they continue to grow. And the adoption uh, or the consideration and the development of a strategic plan is part of that process. Uh, what we are uh, excited to present tonight is something that pulls together everything the city has been doing and is doing uh, into a one comprehensive plan. That will benefit staff and city council in providing focus for the future. And it will also provide something uh, in one comprehensive document that we can share with the public <coughs> to let them know uh, about what is a priority for the city. Uh, essentially what the city's philosophy is and areas of particular focus. 
So I'm um, going to hit, go ahead and get into this presentation. If you would, thank you, Lisa. So uh, a bit of the history that uh, everyone has, is familiar with, and it has been um, all constructed during public processes and, and public meetings. Um, of course, we began a few years ago. Again, we picked the date of 2020 for enhanced budget development activities. But as we know, those we could pick dates that were years prior to that. Um, then we implemented a, city, a citizen community survey in 2021. We received feedback from that. And as we went through the development of this process uh, with our staff and with the city council, we all know that the community survey feedback and input was heavily considered as part of this process. Um, we moved on to establishing three-year goals and corresponding strategies and established a one-year implementation plan for 2023 and then developed the uh, framework for strategic plan evaluation and, and monitoring. And those are some of the things we'll be getting into as we review this plan. So who was involved in the process? I've, I've already touched on that. Uh, the mayor, city council, the leadership team, other staff, and the citizens. So the first part of, of what was developed was establishing uh, a foundation. So we defined a vision for the city, which is uh, we, we, um, what the, the vision is, is what, what we want to share that we aspire to be. And it's a communication of long-term vision for the city. What that is, is that Albemarle will be a place where people can develop their potential, bringing neighbors together to support a connected community rich in water, air, land, and opportunity. So the next the mission, which covers why we exist. The mission of the city of Albemarle is to provide our citizens with a vibrant quality of life based on sound management, transparency, and good stewardship of resources. And then finally, as part of this process, uh, we established our core values, which is how we'll behave and act in executing the mission of the city in the pursuit of the vision. Those core values are ethics, in that we honor the public's trust by displaying the highest standards of honesty, integrity, and accountability. Leadership, we are servant leaders who prioritize the well-being of those in our community. And the vision, which is our planning and decisions that reflect the thriving community we aspire to be. So as we go through the instruction, after establishing the mission and core values and vision, uh, then we begin working on the components of the plan. And uh, for those of us who have been through other strategic plans, we know it has basic core components, and those are goals, strategies, and tactics. And so then as part of our process, over those two years of development, uh, goals were established, strategies were identified, and tactics as well. So our goals are to, uh, what the goals are, are they are specific to achieve the city's vision in the three-year period. Goals are multi-departmental and can be achieved in many different ways. What the strategies are, our strategies describe the specific mechanisms that help us achieve each goal. They may be multi-year and relate to specific actions by department or group of departments. And then finally, as you work your way down in specificity, you come to tactics. Tactics represent the annual action steps, projects, programs, or investments that implement strategies. Tactics can vary from year to year and are departmental specific. Tactics are documented in the annual invitation plan that informs budget preparation. So moving on to the goals and the related strategies that were identified. Sorry. So we had <coughs> a process uh, that we, as you recall, we went through a process where we had several goals, uh, probably a handful more than this, but we combined, adjusted, worked th these uh, into five that you see that are fairly comprehensive of the major priorities for the city. First goal is organizational capacity, which is to invest in the workforce to enhance city operations and efficiency to better serve the community. Uh, strategies would be things such as funding additional resources and services to support anticipated growth, the development of ongoing feedback and evaluation processes that incentivize continuous improvement and providing excellent levels of service, and provide ongoing training and development to all staff. Safety and security. This goal was to enhance resources and improve practices to protect our residents and safeguard the city in order to improve the quality of life. The strategies can be the development of public safety preparedness plan, 
review resources, policies, and guidelines for accountability, utilize data and technology to increase effective and efficient service delivery. Infrastructure is another goal. Invest in infrastructure needs, <coughs> in, invest in infrastructure needed to ensure reliable and consistent service delivery. <coughs> Tactics include plan for future, plan for and fund infrastructure resilience, fund community infrastructure at sufficient levels, streamline and modify systems and policies to improve service. Community and economic growth opportunities was another identified goal. We want to guide growth and facilitate economic opportunities in order to benefit all res residents and businesses. We do that by anticipate new growth and educate residents, business owners, staff, and elected officials on the importance of structured, well-planned growth. Ensure that Albemarle has a wide range of housing options for everyone. Diversify community and economic investments. Prioritize downtown revitalization and beautification and improve workforce training. And finally, a goal was establishing or enhancing a, an inclusive community engagement. <clears throat> Enhance community amenities, programs, and services to engage residents of different backgrounds, lifestyles, and generations. We do that by cultivating effective community relationships and communications, plan for inclusive service, plan for inclusive services, programs, and amenities to enhance the diversity of our community, develop or enhance partnerships with private and nonprofit organizations to leverage combined resources for our community, develop opportunities for continuous <coughs> feedback from our community. So that is just the broad framework of how we got to where we are, what the strategic plan encompasses, and then when we break it down into goals, strategies, and tactics, those are the things that we are looking at. Once those are established, there's also follow-up, monitoring, evaluation, and reporting, and that's what Lisa is going to discuss next. So without, with the strategic plan, you can't have goals and strategies without having an, an, a monitoring and evaluation approach. So we have identified that as um, our performance measures or key form performance indicators. And those are either qualitative or quantitative measures that will help us monitor our implementation plan. We have impact measure measures, which you'll see on a slide later, and those are the quantitative <clears throat> or qualitative measures that are tracked and measures to de demonstrate the overall impact of the str our strategic plan. And then finally, the monitoring and evaluation plan is going to track the progress towards implementation and overall impact of the strategic plan towards achieving one, our vision, and two, all of our goals within this three-year time frame. So, um, so our monitoring approach, here is the responsibilities and who they will lie on. Um, so the staff will track and report progress for each of the tactics that go with each of the strategies that go under the goals. And then they're going to share that success success with administration through monthly reports. The manager is going to manage that performance and share those updates with council and the public. And then council is going to provide guidance to the manager and then share progress with the public as well. And so here's the uh, monitoring steps for our monitoring approach. First, departments are going to track and collect data on the following. Um, we're going to um, collect data on fiscal year tactics, and it's going to be the number in progress, the number not started, and the number completed. Again, like I said earlier, you'll see the impact measure. So we're going to collect data on those specific impact measures over, across all departments. And, so, and then we'll um, see how those impact measures are affecting um, our strategies and goals. And so number two is department's report will report to the manager on a monthly basis. As I said, in our normal departmental reports, you'll see those change up a little bit. And um, in July, or it'll actually, I guess, be August for the July report. And you'll see instead of the priority areas that you see now, you'll see the goals. And then you'll see like maybe a 1.2. So goals, strategy number two is 
um, the narrative or the numbers on that. Um, so, and we'll also talk about the number of fiscal year tactics completed that are in progress or not started. We'll do some narrative on some success stories and some challenges. And then we'll do a quantitative report on the, or qualitative report on the impact measures um, for that month. So number three, the managers and the directors will use this monthly progress reports for staff engagement at our departmental level and performance management. Um, so we're tying it all in together with everything. So the manager will provide quarterly report to the council. Again, that's the number of tactics completed in progress, not started, our success stories, which you're kind of getting that also on a weekly basis from the manager's report. Um, a quantitative report on the metrics, and then as needed narrative on any guidance that from you guys that we might need. So then we'll move on to our monitoring approach. And so our evaluation plan, I mean, our evaluation approach. And so our evaluation plan is um, we're going to do this annually. So the department directors will be um, responsible for assessing progress and the impact <coughs> measures and also identifying challenges. The manager will prepare and submit annual strategic plan evaluation for council and seek out recommended changes as needed. The working group will review those recommended changes and then council can evaluate that plan progress, recommend and approve changes as needed. As you guys remember in our um, workshop, we identified those um, scenarios that might cause us to have to change goals and strategies. So, um, and a lot of those were external. So just wanted to remind you guys of that. <coughs> And so here are the impact measures for year one. So in organizational capacity, we're going to track our turnover rate. And we're also going to track the number of training hours for staff. For safety and security, we're going to track the accidents in the workplace and amount invested in safety and security infrastructure and practices. On the infrastructure side, we're going to track the amount of time city infrastructure is <laughs> offline for community and economic growth. The building permit trends, we'll track those and the amount of investment from business and in, business into our community. And then finally, for <coughs> inclusive community engagement, we're going to track the followers on our social media channels and also the number of in-person community engagement touch points or events that we have. <coughs> So again, with the process, so at mid-year assessment, so six months in, so that will put us around January, um, the working group will meet and will review our monitoring reports and assess the conditions that may trigger a challenge, what I just mentioned earlier, or trigger a change of plan. If changes need to be made, the working group will communicate those changes to the manager and recommend guidance to the manager on upcoming fiscal year implementation plan development, and those are the tactics. The manager will review what the working group recommendations are and submit that report to council with his recommendations on any changes that may need to be made. And then we'll re recommend approach for fiscal year implementation plan development, which will um, be starting for fiscal year 24 at that point. And then the council will review the manager's recommendation and make a determination prior to the start of the budget process. So at the end of the fiscal year, so we're talking May, June, the strategic plan working group will meet and they'll produce an, an, an evaluation for fiscal year implementation plan, success and accomplishments, accomplishments for council and external audiences is what that should say. The manager will review this and submit an evalu evaluation report to council. Council will then um, determine if any changes need to be made since the mid-year progress report. And then we as a city will share this evalu 
evaluation report with the public through all um, channels. And so that is the end of our presentation. Questions, comments? Lisa, Michael, and all the staff, thank you very much for the time that you have taken to put this together. It's been a very long process in which we've tried to reach out and get all of council's thoughts, our citizens' thoughts, and anyone else that would needed to put input into this plan. It's a plan that's going to be a work in progress, progress that we will continue to look at and make changes as needed. But we thank you very much for all you have done. Council, have any further comments? Thanks. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So, so moved. Motion by Council Member Dry, second by Council Member Aldridge. <coughs> Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a hard copy. Uh, it's in your agenda, but I don't know that we have a hard copy. Moving to the municipal calendar is in your agenda. Any questions, comments? Moving on into new business. Consider MJSR 2205 East Over Towns Cluster Subdivision Phase 3. This is what we discussed earlier. This will be the plat subplat for it. Mayor, um, we've received a new plat, a new version of this plat, and uh, staff has recommended to the developers that we hold off on hearing this until uh, June. So. Uh, they are requesting that this be tabled until June 6th, if it pleases Council. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Hall, second by Council Member Alders. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Move on to number eight presentation of the proposed fiscal year 22 23 City of Albemarle budget. Mr. Ferris. Kevin. He just walked in, Kevin. You tell him we knew what he was. <laughs> so, Mayor and City Council, I'm pleased to present for your consideration the fiscal year 22-23 City of Albemarle budget. Um, the budget that you've been provided with and then a budget letter on top. Um, just a review of some items within the current fiscal year, the city is going to be able to fulfill its financial obligations and we should end the year with solid balances. Before I get into the proposed budget, I'd like to review our accomplishments uh, that are a result of the previous budgets. Um, seems like just yesterday we were talking about a 21-22 budget and many things have transpired during that time. First of all, we've received very strong audit reports since then. We also received approval of our fourth certified annual financial report from the Government Finance Officers Association. This is an excellent reflection of uh, regarding staff's professionalism, competency in managing the financial operations of the city. We've received these uh, four years in a row, the only four years we've applied. And so after a while it becomes the norm, but it's something we should not be taking for granted. In the last fiscal year, we've also begun the construction of the Albemarle Business Center. Uh, this project is follow through on the city's desire to provide jobs. Or this is a follow through on the city's desire to provide not just jobs, but careers. We've seen a growth in property tax values. The city has implemented the wayfinding signage program, developed a stormwater management program that was under consideration. The city constructed the new parking lot on PD Avenue. We helped preserve and find a buyer for the reuse of 115 and 117 West South Street. The police department, by the end of the fiscal year, will have added seven new vehicles. Parks and Recreation has had many accomplishments, including the resurfacing of Northwoods Lane, the and paving of previously unpaid parking areas at the Waddell Center, and the construction of 10 pickleball courts at Rock Creek Park. 
in Public Works Department, we significantly increased our funding for street preservation and maintenance. The fire department has seen many successes. We have purchased a fire engine. We are undertaking the refurbishment of Ladder 11. And we've added three new firefighters. That is one new position per shift in the department. The planning department has completed an overhaul of the city's residential land use regulations to allow more efficient use of property, <coughs> keep pace with best practices in development and to comply with new state regulations. In utilities, uh, we continue with our pole inspection and replacement program for the reliability of our system. We've improved our electric system from the western side of the Admiral Business Center to serve the property. We've upgraded and improved the NC Highway 73 sewer lift station. At the Jack F. Neal water <coughs> plant, we've installed a carbon tank and mixer to replace a previously manual process. And once again, in the last fiscal year, we were able to reduce our electric rates. Public housing has many significant accomplishments as well. Many of them do show up in the capital fund program, but within the current fiscal year, we've completed a significant door replacement project and, and anticipate the completion of the restoration of the burn units. So moving on to the proposed budget. Each year, it's quite a challenge to prepare a budget for what's arguably the most complex and diverse operation in Stanley County. With that, we are still able to present a budget that allows us to meet our financial obligations and continue to provide services that citizens rely on while addressing a significant portion of our goals from the many hours of strategic planning. So to hit the highlights of our many funds, the budget does include uh, no proposed property tax increase, keeping our property tax rate at 61 cents per $100 of assessed valuation. There is a slight increase in the solid waste disposal fee to reflect increased volume, but we also propose a <clears> decrease <throat> in the, the solid waste collection fee as the uh, loose leaf collection fee and charges have moved to the stormwater program. There is no proposed in change in the $10 vehicle tax nor planning and development fees. So when we talk about the general fund, people, that's our funded primarily by property taxes or our largest single source of revenue. And people always like to know where do their tax dollars go. So to keep that in perspective, the police and fire departments alone cost more than the value of all the property taxes brought in by the city of Albemarle. So that uh, highlights several things, including the need to diversify our property tax base as much as possible, continue to grow the economy, but also the importance of other fees and services. Major initiatives included in the budget include updating the comprehensive plan to the planning department to assist with managing, identifying, and planning for the unprecedented growth that we're experiencing, the replacement of all body cameras within the police department, including the associated storage capabilities. We are proposing to increase the street maintenance and repair budget. This budget combined, the general fund portion of the budget combined with the PAL bill adds $225,000 to that endeavor, moving it from $400,000 in the current fiscal year to $625,000 next year. The budget provides for new diving structures at the pools, funding, continued funding for streetscape and wayfinding improvements, and a continued partnership with retail strategies, downtown strategies, and services, services such as curbside electronic recycling and strengthening of our information technology infrastructure as well as many other capital projects. In the water and sewer fund, it does propose a 7% water and sewer rate increase necessary to pay for existing debt, current commitments, capital needs, and to maintain services and compliance. There is no proposed increase in water and sewer tap fees or meter fees. In the water and sewer fund, we plan to undertake the replacement of a water line on Moose Street. This is one of our most troublesome locations. Uh, we will construct a system connection between two subdivisions to improve redundancy, reliability, and water quality. We will also increase our funding for water meters and begin a move to AMI meters. And we will continue the in-house inflow and infiltration work. And we'll also be making a payment to the North Carolina Department of Transportation for the relocation of a water line associated with their Bethany Road bridge replacement project. We had hope and budgeted for it within this current fiscal year, but it's a DOT project, and as you've probably seen in the newspapers, that project has been delayed, but we still need to make that payment. In the electric fund, uh, we propose to implement another phase of our cost of service recommendations. 
Uh, with that, the average electric residential electric customer will see a 5% decrease in their electric costs. This marks the eighth consecutive year with no increase to the electric rates. And in the last seven years, the average electric residential electric customer will have seen a decrease in their bill, averaging 15.5%. Significant initiatives in the electric fund include uh, conversion to AMI meters and related infrastructures to support the AMI project, improved outage, ma outage management capabilities, greater funding for LED streetlight conversion, continuation of the pole inspection and replacement program, and overall, uh, we will be increasing the supplies, materials, and equipment to keep pace with the demands for the unprecedented growth we're seeing and the strain placed on the supply chains. Within the landfill, we are not recommending any tipping fee increase, nor a change in the $1 per ton fee for closure, post-closure costs. Initiatives in the landfill fund include the purchase of a new landfill compactor, repaving of the landfill, landfill road from Stony Gap to the scale house, replacement of the scale house itself, and the acquisition of a generator to run the scale house. As I mentioned before, many of the projects in public housing are paid for through the capital project fund program and as this budget outlines we will continue to provide support services to meet the needs of the residents and those all those that we serve the budget does include for the first time the establishment of a stormwater management fund and program activities uh, in terms of employee items the budget proposes a six percent across the board cost of living increase we will be entering in the sixth year of our self funded health insurance program based on our trends and usage that we're currently seeing we've been able to reduce the rates that we charge ourselves thereby allowing more money to remain in the various funds for services employee needs and capital projects we do propose to continue paying 100 percent of employee health care costs and we will also the budget does provide a provision that we will increase the city's share of the retirement system contribution on behalf of the employees, which is a retirement system mandate. As I wrap it up, I do want to thank the mayor and council and staff for the many hours of work into setting goals and priorities that provide focus for the budget development process. I specifically want to thank Finance Director Jacob Weevil for his work and significant contributions to the development of the budget and the nine funds that comprise the overall budget. In just the last few years, we've moved from seven funds of the city to nine funds. Each one has a set of revenues, has to be managed, and has to be balanced each year. And I want to thank all department heads for their work in developing their budget requests, as well as the significant investment of additional time and effort to develop our strategic plan, which was used to guide our budget requests. Copies of the proposed budget are available for the local media this evening. Copies will be made available through the city clerk's office on our website at the Albemarle uh, branch of the Stanley County Library. And uh, at the conclusion of our presentation, I do want to request the city council set a public hearing for 6.30 on June 6th to consider the budget. Uh, before council takes any action on the public hearing, I want to ask Finance Director Jacob Weevil if he has anything to add about this year's budget and process. Thank you, Michael. Um, I just also want to echo my thanks to everyone. It's been amazing working here the last three years, seeing all the effort that goes into it, and just being a part of this project with the strategic plan this year is it's very exciting for me to see where the future is going. I do want to just add um, a couple of notes about some clerical changes that you'll see in the budget this year from last year, just for full transparency. Um, to start with, we have some new account groups in the general fund, one for public information and one for legal. Public information is going to be group code 104123, and legal is 104150. These were previously budgeted in fiscal year 22 in administration, so for transparency and so we can better see where we're investing those resources, we're just separating them out. Um, you will also see a whole new account group structure for the stormwater fund, and it is going to be fund 64. Uh, so our account groups are set up to be fund number, then department code. So you'll see 64, 
74, et cetera. But just know when you're in the 64 groups, you're looking at the stormwater. Um, I do want to point out on the budget ordinance itself, there is a clerical change in section 4A and 4B. We are replacing the word department with function. This is a clerical change only. The department has always been interpreted to be me to be meaning function as a finance term. So our budget ordinance is based by function, the fun function of public safety, the function of public works. And within those account groups, there are different uh, account structures. So an example in public works, you would have 104510 for street maintenance and repair, but then 104512 for public works administrative expenses. So just to, just to clarify again, this is just a clerical change to in, so that the finance language is in there. It does not give the budget, um, the officer or the city manager who is our budget officer does not grant any additional authorities as it currently operates. So let's see. Oh, and also in the budget ordinance, we are breaking out um, interfund transfers and debt service so that at a city-wide level and by fund you will see those as their own function groups uh, this is just again for better transparency ease of reporting in the case of debt service where historically it might sit in a department's operating budget and you have to go and find the debt service for fire or for police we're going to break those out by account groups it is not present in the budget package that you have. However, it is present in the ordinance that you have. That should not change unless council wishes to add more changes to the budget. But if you want to see an example of what that's going to look like, if you when you look at the stormwater fund, you'll see how that has an account structure that does group things by, it'll have a different account code for interfund transfers or for debt service so that these are more easily tracked. Council, have any questions for Mr. Ferris or for Louisville? I, I have a couple just so as we're moving on and I can, I'll ask and either one of you can answer. I'm starting on the first page. It looks like that, um, uh, the third page actually, that one cent is 118 eight, it's almost $119,000 revenue. Currently, what is this year without us having to look it up? Without looking it up, I do not know. Okay. Oh, I know it's less than that. I'm just asking, wonder how much that was. And then headed on to stormwater fund. Um, just today, I got a um, call that said, I guess folks know that this was coming out tonight. Um, how much was ours? And I can't remember. Is it 11? The stormwater. $11. $11.50 11 per okay. ERU. Okay. So, and I, I just, the one the person, the person that called this afternoon said, well, why is ours eleven dollars and a half, and Concord is five fifteen? And I said, I don't know, but I'll throw that out there. But I do know we're starting from scratch on this thing, um, and that, and I was trying to explain to them that their that their solid waste would be cut because of the leaves. So it's actually, I think, if we look at it, it's only a net. Is it a net? I could probably ask. Is it a net of seven dollars and a half a month? Eight dollars. The savings to the when we moved leaves from the general fund, the net gain was two dollars and twenty six cents. Okay. Now you won't see a two twenty six decrease in the bill because uh, we enter a new fiscal year and there's a CPI that will be added to the waste management cost. But the net change before the CPI is two twenty six. So thirty. I so a portion of that would have been increasing anyway. I guess I I thought when we were over at the church discussing this that we were going to actually see a decrease. So we, I'm just, I mean, <laughs> not with the CPI in there, but actually see a decrease. Um, and the net was not going to be $11 and a half. Just know that that's right. out there still. Um, and that's I was, and for some reason, I thought that this budget was going to look at not necessarily a, an across the board at 6%, but I thought we were looking at a third this year a third, a third, and a third. Are we not doing that? That is correct. When discussing with the leadership team uh, from the time the budget was started 
until the budget has been presented. Leadership team, and I think rightly so, felt like that there were significant market factors and changes that have been taking place where the cost of inflation, cost of living, and other expenses have risen so dramatically that we needed to put the focus on across the board increases for all employees to be able to keep up with that dramatic change. So uh, what we would do is hopefully delay it no more than a year, depending on, again, the, some of the market factors. But you're right, that was the plan. Uh, but in discussing it with our team, felt like this was the best approach because uh, what we have been providing in the past was actually going to create a deficit for employees where the cost of goods and services uh, were going to outpace our ability to pay across the board. And I see that you've noted that within the body of the overall on the next to the last page, but I wanted to bring that out because that's something we had been, that I had been led to believe, and I'm sure my compadres up here has, had as well. Um, so our paving is only going up to 625, but it is going up. It's going up from 400,000 to, to 625. Okay. And um, my last comment is you mentioned uh, within your verbal description of downtown or with what was going on is that we were continuing the downtown strategies, but following through with downtown, downtown strategies. Do we yet have a meeting set up that you know of as a follow up with that downtown strategies that we've had one meeting and there was supposed to be some follow up? Do you know about any of that? I don't. If the meeting has been set, I, I'm not aware of it. Okay. So I believe one has. Okay. And I guess the very last thing is, have we started the performance appraisal? Has it been implemented or are we working it? HR is still developing that plan. Okay. Further questions, comment? Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ferris, it looks like in here we have an assistant fire chief position has been added. When do we anticipate that will be filled? Well, the budget would have to be approved and then the position would be advertised. And then as soon as somebody can, uh, you know, as an adequate or a candidate that meets the chief's choosing can be hired. So not until after July 1. Um, again, this is some of the things we discuss in our um, set work sessions, but there are several positions uh, for related to stormwater, of course, and then several others because uh, goal number one has to do with staff capacity and ability to do the job and be able to provide services. So yes, the assistant fire chief is one of those positions that's been talked about and needed for quite a while that we're able to fund this year. And so all the positions that are included in the budget, if the budget is approved and they stay in there, then those come online after July 1. Further questions? Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just, Thank just you. a comment that I'm glad to see that we're taking that across the board versus a third based upon what we've seen, what we've heard, and the outside influences from other communities. I, th I think if we had stayed with that, we'd be sending the wrong message to our employees. Uh, we saw it with the electric fund, and I'm very pleased. And I hope the employees will look at it and say that we we listen, uh, staff has listened, and we're taking the uh, positive approach to to solve a, a very big problem that's been going on for many many years, not just recently. Thank you very much. So we set that approach, you know, the situation was dramatically different than it is now. And again, the team felt like this was the best approach. So we made that we made that change in philosophy, and which is why I wanted to specifically note it in the budget letter, uh, because it is something we had previously decided. But as we talked about the strategic plan, uh, you know, you make a plan, but then you have to evaluate the plan and uh, make adjustments as necessary. And that's one of the adjustments we've made. Flexibility is important. Moving on, information, the annual city of... We need to set a public hearing. Set a public hearing. Yes, yes, we do. I'll make a motion to set on it, uh, budget public hearing for June 6th. Second. At 6.30. Second. Motion by Councilmember Whitley. Second. Second, Second by Councilmember Drive. Further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Right. Information, the annual hmm. city of Albemarle employee cookout is in your agenda May the 19th. 11 to 1 or 11, 1.30, what is it this year? 1.30. 1.30 this year. I would encourage you to try to come out and see them <coughs> as all possible. Uh, 
We have two additions. You have two agreements in your packet at your desk tonight. One is for an agreement with Stanley Motors. The other is for an agreement with First and Main LLC for us to do some paving and striping of a parking area and putting in a catch <coughs> basin as we talked about early on as a public-private partnership when the project started. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Council Member Dry, second by Council Member Aldridge. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, quickly coming around the table. Council, I sent you an email earlier about a week ago about the town and state dinner on Wednesday, June the 1st. If you intend to, to go, I think it starts at 5 this year. I think it started at 5.30 in the past. So we would need to leave somewhere around 2 o'clock. And I would envision we'll get back in the 9 range. If you're intending on going, please let Miss Cindy know and she will register us. What's the deadline? I do not know. see a deadline. Let me look at it. There's not, but it says after registering, please invite your legislators. I've already reached you, out to our to join you representative well. Sasser, and he said he would try to attend. I will do the same with Senator Ford. <clears throat> There's not a deadline. Uh, Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame. Lisa, would you come up and give us a quick little report on the Hall of Fame and when it is and where it is? And Um, that is May 23rd. It is an, on Pfeiffer University's campus at the Stoke Student Center. Um, I think it starts at 6 o'clock and tickets are $35. You can get that at Albemarle Parks and Recreation. <laughs> We're extending that out to both Nivens and Waddell Center. Um, Oakboro Parks and Rec, Locust Parks and Rec, Bait and Brews, um, and back and bash here locally. I'll plan to attend. Council, if you know you're going to attend, let's tell Ms. Kaiser tonight. I'll be there. there. I'll be out of town. Okay. Looks like all of them, but Ms. Hughes. How many is we, that, please? How many? One, two, three, four, five. Shirley, you going? No. Okay. Looks like five of them. In the past, we have, they've done a Get them a table to the city of Albemarle. However, you're doing it this year. It's I mean, a table is going to be eight since you're only going to have five. Do you want a full table? I don't even know what that costs. I just know that individual tickets are thirty-five dollars. We'll allow you to work it out. In the past, they've given us a table and filled in with other people. We'll allow okay. you to work it out. Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> didn't they? Didn't they cancel the 2019? I haven't had one in the last two years. Yeah. Did we not collect money for that? The 2019 one? That was who collect the, money? Uh, <laughs> who collect money? Uh, did, did we not uh, we, stand it up? No. Okay. I don't remember always that far right. back. Come around, Mr. Ferris. I've got two items. Um, <laughs> one involves uh, planning and uh, minimum housing code cases. Um, <laughs> had some reports lately and you all know that those are moving forward it turns out that we're ready to proceed with about seven to eight public hearings so uh, that would have to be held by council so we have a couple options obviously eight public hearings within a council meeting uh, really becomes quite a lot and detracts from regular business and creates a very long meeting and can be quite an issue so um, we have a couple thoughts or options we want to run by council. One is we can have a special meeting just to consider all seven or eight, however many it turns out to be. And that could be set for some time in June. Uh, the other option is uh, we can do uh, two, three, four, divide it up over a couple meetings, three meetings, however many council would like to do that would still uh, then happen during a regular business meeting but it wouldn't be quite so many at one time and really extend uh, these meetings. So just a, a thought for council and we'd like your input on how you'd like to proceed. So asking Britt, what's the turnaround time on those? 
is it a is it a 14 day notice so at this point we would be doing a i think it's a 15 day notice 15. but typically as a courtesy we like to run it just a little earlier especially considering that this process is a bit new in as far as the routine um so for the first we would like to advertise maybe more than the uh, statute requires um so we would if you would say tonight you would like to have it in June, it will be sometime after June 7th if you wanted to hold a special session. I, the reason I was asking is I was just wondering if, if the turnaround was available for us to be able to do some in two weeks. I expect that the sooner we can do all of them, the better we are because we've got <coughs> folks that have been waiting and waiting and waiting for some of this stuff to get done. Um, you know, it, they should not. And I mean, think about how many of them might be controversial i mean it may look like a long time to have eight on there <clears throat> but when you start i mean very few of them particularly since the paperwork has been done uh will take that long so i'm of the opinion that we do it sooner than later and i just would like to sit down and do them all i mean at one time um yeah i just get it done like in one meet just meet yeah. and do at that yes yes I just think yeah. we've got to. I think that the issue then becomes when do we do that? Okay. Council, your regular meeting is on June the 6th. Did you want to go to a Monday? Would you go to a Tuesday? What would Council like to do? I'm not going to be here. Well, I mean, I'm going to do them all on a regular yeah, meeting, but if we need to, I mean, they should not take a long time. It's the introduction of them that takes the most time. Kevin, we, <laughs> the introduction of them takes the most time. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Do you recall how many public hearings you have for June 6th already? Plus now the budget. And plus the budget. Council, what do you want to do? So that would be nine no. public hearings and one. No. That would be 10. Not the budget and that. Yeah, could we mm -hmm. split them between much. the next two no. meetings? Plus, we don't know what else we're going to have coming between now and then. Uh-uh. Yeah. As far as a regular agenda item. Say a special meeting. Yes. We'll be here at midnight. Okay. What, did, what night do you want to do that? Back, back it up. <clears throat> Could we do it the week of the 23rd of May? That's If everything is ready, that gives you 21 days, even if you were able to file them um, Wednesday, that would still give you three weeks' notice. So I do know that the code enforcement officer is cleaning up some of the case files, so I would say that a May meeting is feasible. And I would prefer, and I know he would probably prefer June. So what night you want? What night did you, did you say you prefer, would prefer I, June? I think mm -hmm. June would yeah. be a, a best. Miss Burgess said she prefers first go to June. So okay. Well, our regular meetings on the sixth. I guess an off Monday would be the thirteenth. Back up Could then. We? Back up to May thirty first. That's Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. No, that's the Tuesday after Memorial Day. <laughs> oh, 31st. Yeah, the 31st is a Tuesday. Everybody's back at work that day. Miss Birch is asking us to go to June, June. After, after June 7th is what you said. Yes. So what about June, June 7th? 7th? How about on June 7th? That's fine. I'm, I'm not available that entire week. What about you all 13th? do it without How about the 13th fine. then? Let's go. June, what about June the 13th? Is everybody available on Monday, June the 13th? He's gone. Okay, recommend me another day. Are you going that whole week? That whole week of June 13th? Yeah. Yeah. We're working. The retired people are. They don't necessarily have to be on a Monday, though, do they? No. no. Uh -uh. So mm. Chris is going that whole Chris is that. Are you, you going Chris the whole week? Of the 13th. Okay. What about the 17th? Do the 21st. That's a Friday. No. 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 May the seventeenth. Chris is on the whole week. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Chris is. What about Tuesday the twenty-first? Mr. Ferris is down then. I'm here. I'm here. 
June 21st. You are here in June Let's 21st? Let's do June 21st. Um, Martha, so are you oh, okay. Here? Mr. Ferris said he would be here the 21st. How about everybody else on the 21st? I'm good. I'll entertain a motion. So, so moved. moved. Motion for June the 21st to hold a special meeting to hear the nuisance violations and consider ordinances. And are these What's are, in, are these just residential or some of these commercial? So there's a, a combination of non-residential and uh, non-residential and residential. Non-residential and residential. Okay. Motion is by Council Member six thirty Whitley. Second by Council Member Aldridge. The time for June the 21st at six thirty. Is that correct? Correct. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed. Motion carries. Mr. Ferris, you have another one? I, I do have one more. Just something to think about. Uh, I'm trying to plan ahead. Jump my calendar back. So we have a budget work session scheduled for the 18th. Uh, when we established the calendar, that was set. So that shouldn't be an issue, but that's what's on the calendar. Just thinking ahead. Um, we start at 4 p.m. You know, that but one by itself may not be enough um, under the current budget review process now if council would prefer that um, we talk even at a higher level and um, truncate that discussion a little bit they're willing to do that and we can try to get it in one but if we're going to go with the same process uh, one night probably won't be sufficient so just be thinking about um, other nights that will work prior to um, the budget public hearing on June 6th. And I will throw this out there. We have it set for 4 o'clock, but if 4 o'clock is not amenable to all the council being able to be there, I would say that we need to move that time, though we have had that on there. I just, I would rather do it when all the council can be there. Council, can you make it at 4 o'clock? I can. Or is that good? Okay. All right. And Just do we remember between now and our next meeting if we need to set a second date, which Mr. Ferris I think has recommended yeah, us that we consider yeah. that. Should I we think we probably and, will. Should we go ahead and do that? I think we will. Too. Where where are Based we on. doing that? Why don't we go ahead and do that? Now. Because as time goes on, people are going to get busy on yeah, the calendar. Yeah, let's go ahead and set a date. Set it. On what? What about the twenty fifth? The week later? Because. Normally do about three or four yeah. apartments per night. That's right. Yeah, we're gonna have to have another night. I usually, yeah, I usually try to hit the general fund in one night. And we'll I mean, go as far as we can. Out, but and the twenty fifth. That's a week. And I have a motion by Council Member Hughes to do May the twenty fifth for the second night again at four p.m. Yes, sir. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Council Member Dry. Further discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion carries. Do we have any idea of where that that may be held? They'll be held in this room. Okay. Twenty fifth. The work the work session on yes. both. Okay. So that's three windy Wednesdays in a row. We got May eleventh for the storm water, May eighteenth, and the twenty fifth. Uh, okay, because it basically still says to be determined on the. Yeah. But I guess. <coughs> Mr. Townsend. No comments. Miss Hughes. Um, just one thing, I had a, I took a walk at Rock Creek um, yesterday, and I don't know if it's beavers or what, but maybe staff needs to look. It, it appears it's not a creek anymore; it's looking like a lake at the end of the at the end of the trail. I don't know. It's getting to be a pretty big creek pond. I don't know. I think it's beavers. Actually. How how wide is our property the size of the trail down there, Miss Townsend? So the creek is the creek is not on our property. It's on that right hand side of the trail if you're walking down, correct? Right to the end, it's on the right. That is not our property. Oh, okay. Well, it's close to the it's close to the edge of the path, but it's not encroaching. So, all right. All right. Mr. Aldridge. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the police department for their uh, focus uh, on traffic issues <clears throat> on Ridge Street. I had a, somebody call me today uh, requesting continued patrol of the Park Ridge Road area uh, from Albemarle High School all the way up to Ridge Street. That's uh, that's been some. There's been some pretty 
pretty dangerous occurrences there. Um, also, welcome back, Council Member Dry. It's good to see you over there. I'm glad you're feeling much better tonight. Uh, also, I had a call today from someone at another municipality. I wanted to congratulate uh, Mayor Pro Tem Hall. Uh, I was not there last week, but I think she was elected to the Board of Directors for the NC League of Municipalities for a two-year term. So congratulations, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Hall, on that deal. And also, I'd like to maybe talk at some point about, uh, I've had several complaints, and I think I brought this up a couple months ago, about maybe considering a gate at the front of Chuck Moorhead Park. There, I'm getting complaints. There's traffic in and out of that park all hours of the early morning. I know we have a we have hours set on a park to, to close, I guess, but there's not a gate or anything that prevents people from going up in there. So I've, I'm getting some complaints on that deal. So maybe we could somehow look at that. That's it. Thank you. Ms. Louder. I just wondered if we have a noise ordinance. We do have one, yes ma'am. We do have one. Yes ma'am. I was sitting down there at the at the prior place where you always have to sit for 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good service. Yeah. And uh, I just heard so many bad mufflers. Um, coming down Main Street, well, coming down Second and First Street, and all the way to the turn. Is there anybody working on that, or has anybody got any complaints? I, I think that would be better applied to the state law rather than the city ordinance, because city ordinance is just a fine. It's not a criminal activity, or, and I don't know how the district attorney would look at it. So let's turn it over to the police chief, and if anything he needs from us, he can come back to us. Otherwise, he can work on it. Is that good with you? Okay. Anything further? No, that's it. Okay. Ms. Hall. Um, add a boy to the Stanley County Historic Group. Um, the garden, garden tours on Saturday, it got to be really hot, but that was a nice event. Uh, a nice garden tour with hats, right, Lisa? Um, and if you don't have anything to do this week and are fussing because there's never, ever, ever anything to do in Albemarle, Thursday night starts music at the Market Station this Thursday night, and it is the Stanley County Concert Band, and they're doing a repeat of the concert that they did last week at the Ag Center. So that's Thursday night. Friday night is... Um, City Lake Park with the Ace Party Band, and it's not going to rain, though it says it's 60% chance. Mm -hmm. And Saturday is a cruise in downtown. Isn't that Saturday? Car show, excuse me, a car show downtown, but there's music downtown, isn't there? And it's part of the uh, special events and Tiffany and the pinup and pump. So there's a car show downtown on Saturday. Um, Norwood's Arbor Day had been canceled for the past three or so years, and it was this weekend, and it was there was a great turnout down there. A um, lot of people, so people are ready to be out into the public. Attaboy to the fire department and to Kenny Kendall, to Chief Kendall. Um, five, were there five, Ronnie, oh, or seven, six, seven? seven. seven. County, County and Albemarle, there, there were five Albemarle and two other departments graduation that was held at North Albemarle um, Baptist Church on um, Friday, this past Friday night. Um, so they were already, it was so funny, I was wondering why in the world they were doing it on a Friday night at 6 o'clock until I realized that some of them were going to work on Saturday morning at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock in the morning. So um, that was good. Um, this month, May, is Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month. Um, and as things have changed and COVID hitting and they've not been able to do their um, Butterfly House breakfast in the past couple of years, they are doing it um, this year on Friday, May 13th. So people that are listening to this or watching it want to contact the Butterfly House for more information on that. Um, and lastly, this weekend at the, or this last week at the league conference, um, Ronnie, um, Mayor, and uh, Chris and I attended. I'm sure we broke down and went to different workshops. They were all good, and they were really good because nobody's been doing this for the past couple of years. But the best one yet was 
how to communicate with everyone who isn't you. And I am going to get this to um, Dana, get this little information to Dana. I'll have to get you a clean one because I've written all over mine. It is a fabulous 30-minute exercise that may help our, all of our communication everywhere. So I'll get that to you. Um, and lastly, you all, I sent most of you a text on Friday about being getting contacted from um, from Kim Scott uh, about HUD wanting to get in touch with some folks. Um, they did call me this uh, they called me this morning. So, um, and they basically were asking about us when we come together about how much we see of their budget. So that's what they were wanting to know from from me or from actually they called to speak with a uh, commissioner because we see it as, as the board for the housing authority. And I guess nationally they call those housing authorities commissioners. So that's all. Mr. Whitman. Nope. I'll pass. Mr. Dry. Glad to be back. Yeah. Good to have you back. Glad to be back. All right. I'll entertain a motion that we go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 318.1A3 and 6 for personnel and to consult with an attorney. So moved. Motion by Councilmember Aldridge. Second. Second by Councilmember Louder. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. I'll entertain a motion that we go back into regular session. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilmember Aldridge. Second by Councilmember Hughes. All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Coming out of closed session, we held for personnel and to consult with the attorney. We have nothing to announce. I'll entertain a motion that we adjourn to our next regular scheduled meeting, May 16th. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilmember Hughes, second by Councilmember Aldridge. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. <laughs>